Tinubu's failure to rescue the adopted children in the north is causing more uproar. Many Nigerians keep wondering why we will keep having this experience after the eight years of Buhari's failure. Nigerians are also concerned that if the government keeps delaying in rescuing these children, they might be sold out as slaves by their adopters. What is the government really doing? Why is this government not hard on the bandits? Why the romance after the eight years, Buari did the same thing with the bandits? Take a look at this. Nine years of banditry. Are we going to continue this forever? It's going to be a forever war. We are all here in Abuja. Our children in the villages have been taken away. Our women in the villages have been raped. Our farmers cannot go into the, in, 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 to their farms. Did you guys see the primary school of Koriga? Many people fear these children do not have the experience of the Chibok girls. We know more than 10 years now. Some of the Chibok girls are yet to return to their parents. The abduction of 287 school students in Koriga. The abductions of 16 children from an Islamic school and the abductions of 112 residents of an IDP camp in Borno State are some of the native occurrences captured in the report of military operations in the bi-weekly briefing. According to the Director of Defense Media Operations, in all the three major abduction cases, the military did not receive any information before or during the attacks, but learned of the incidents hours later. Criminal investigation revealed that the internally displaced persons left camp to undisclosed locations to fetch firewood, which was beyond the permissible distance approved of five to seven kilometers from their camp. Now, these internally displaced persons did not notify the camp authorities of their movement. It was later that same night, about 20 30 hours at night, when the IDPs did not return to camp, that alarm was raised as to the possible adoption by terrorists. It was at this stage that troops were notified of the incident. On the 9th of March, troops, terrorists, invaded and kidnapped 16 pupils otherwise called al with a woman in Gada, local government area of Sokoto State. The incident took place at about 0100 hours, which otherwise known as 1 a.m. And it was not reported to troops until about 1500 hours, otherwise 3 p.m. of the same day. Now, the late reporting of this incident affected troops' response time in the ongoing search and rescue effort. On the 7th of March, troops received information that terrorists had invaded LEA school in Chikum local government area of Kaduna State. The report indicated that they had abducted unconfirmed number of pupils. Now, this incident was reported barely an hour or two after it occurred. So, the Nigerian military is now saying that if you don't report any security-related incidents to them on time, it will be difficult for them to have any results as expected from the people. Now, Tinobu said he's not going to pay a dime in negotiating with these bandits. Do you think the Northern Elders are okay with this President's insistence that there is no negotiation going to happen with terrorists do you believe that this is a good policy initiative coming from the presidency the refusal right. to pay no ransom. government yes. up front will say right i mean no government will pay ransom and no government will say they will pay ransom and uh, the president saying that i don't fault that at all i mean when we got engaged getting uh, the hostages taken after the train attack i mean we were up front with them we are not going to talk money and there was no way we were going to escalate ransom payment to our principal for him to tell the president so that is the position of government and it is up to the negotiators to continue talking to to the hostage takers. So yes, 
that is the right policy to say up front and uh, government needs to be very clear just like president muhammad buhari's government was clear up front so that was the right thing all right prof uh, and thanks again for for joining us um let's dimension the issue properly uh and to cover uh basically what has happened in the last two weeks or thereabout uh we've witnessed uh massive kidnappings in kaduna in boronu and in sokoto um there are soft targets, uh, pupils, students, uh, women, etc. The army is saying that um, they're a bit, you know, uh, um, handicapped in moving quickly to rescue because they, you know, gave reasons about the ID, ID uh, camp and people who moved out of there and no information was forthcoming uh, at the right time. What do you make of what has happened across those three states? Given the fact that a few months ago we were dealing with issues in Plateau State and, and in Benue State in the North Central. Now we're dealing with issues in the core North. The president says uh, no going back. But at the same time, he's also saying that there are agents of destabilization in the polity. Um, are there political undertones to all the kidnappings that we are witnessing, given the fact that this is about exactly 10 years after the Chibo girls kidnapped in 2014? Why are we back at this juncture, Prof? Yeah, so it's a very good question, and it's a question you need to ask the president and uh, his handlers of national security. I'm very saddened, like every right-thinking Nigerian, every Nigerian with a beating heart should be. I truly am very saddened. It's never happened in this country that within 10 days, up to 700 people were abducted. 400 in Borno, 287 students, primary and secondary students, as young as 8 and as old as 12. And then the Islamia students in, in, in Sokoto. It has never happened over 700 people abducted within a week. In Chibok, Boko Haram abducted 276. But here in Kaduna, Koriga, there's 287, broad daylight, after they had assembly. This terrorist came into the village on motorcycles, hundreds of motorcycles, surrounded the school and took the children. Those that could walk, walk. Those that could, they could hold on the motorcycle, they did. Parents in the village were seeing their children taken away and carted into the forest. You mean, the question to ask is, we are talking over a hundred motorcycles coming in. Nobody saw them. Where were the drones? The same drones that dropped ordinance on Tudumbiri. Where was the intelligence? That nobody could see them coming, and they took away our children. Parents were watching them into the forest. And we are all parents. I mean, this is failure of us as parents, failure of us as leaders, failure of government. The primary responsibility of government is one on one alone to protect its people and its welfare. So. The military will do very well, not giving excuses. This is the same thing we had from the spokesman of President Muhammad Buhari, remember, after rice farmers were slaughtered in Zabarmari, Borno State. He came out and said it was the fault of, of the farmers because they did not inform the military. So the military at times like this, for goodness sake, you did the same thing after Tudumbiri, don't do that again. There was a failure, you're going to correct it. And you must get your house in order. It's not only the military. Where is the DSS? Where is the police? Everything military, military, military. There is not a single police station in that village. In that village. We expect the military to be everywhere to do everything. This is clear failure of intelligence. Clear failure of intelligence. And the military, please, please, please stop giving excuses for all of this. This is inexcusable. Things have happened. Tell Nigerians how you're going to get this, their, their children out. Tell Nigerians how you get their mothers and sisters and grandmothers out. Tell Nigerians how you get those children from, from Sokoto out. Instead of giving excuses. Excuses do nothing but irritate Nigerians. We are not in the best of mood. People are suffering. People are hardly having anything to eat. We're in the period of Ramadan, praying. Things like this happen, people are prayerful. 
not only for themselves, for the children, for our security forces, and for all the gallant things they do. Excuses help nobody and they make us uh, not happy. But this is a failure, just like President Muhammad Buhari must take responsibility for all the things that happened during his time. This government must too. This is coming 10 years after Chibok. Chibok happened in April 2014. So 2024, almost 10 years to the date, we are having the same thing. So we haven't learned anything over the last 10 years. We've had safe school initiatives only by mouth. The world is watching us. Professor, the world is watching. Professor Usman, um, the Financial Times in the Scalen ed editorial said these kidnappings are just uh, signs of a failing state. This is not good for us as a country, for us as a people. I have friends all over the world, Qatari friends, friends from Dubai all over the world calling me yesterday and saying, Usman, what is happening? How can any foreign investor come to Nigeria when yes. we are still terrorists are still cutting our children into the forest? Where is our humanity as a people? Where is the government? The military is overdoing things, overtaking responsibility. Where is everybody else? Where is everybody else? So, the primary thing to do now is to find a way to get these children out. We will have a time when we we'll start blaming whoever needs to be blamed. And you don't get these children out by going and blasting everybody and killing that. The military knows that and the military has been. And I would commend the military for this. Since Boko Haram, since, since Chibok, the military has been consistent and mature and compassionate enough in whatever operation they do to rescue hostages, they don't go there recklessly to kill people. Like I hear some pundits advocating. So the military is mature enough, has had enough experience to know how to get this, our children out with the help of all other security services. And that is our prayer. The primary thing now is to identify who are these bad guys. What are their motives, if any? Where are they located? And how do we get to them? And I call on the government and all pundits, especially those that speak Hausa on, on, on radio and television, to dial down. Whatever we say, these bad guys hear us. Now is not the time for making noise, but time for quiet action to get everybody out. From the 400 women taken from Borno to the 287 children taken from Koriga and from the uh, children taken from Gada local government. But this is a very sad moment for the whole country. And our prayer is that these children get out of uh, captivity and these women get rescued without any loss of life. Professor Usmana, you've started off this conversation on a, on a very uh, a serious note, talking about the fact that we need to take action. And when we look at the federal government's stance not to negotiate with terrorists, coming 24 hours after Kaduna-based Muslim cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi offered to approach and have a dialogue with these terrorists who abducted the pupils, he also advised that to facilitate this release, uh, uh, facilitate the release rather of the abducted school children, and warning against uh, President Tinubu repeating the same mistake. Uh, by his immediate predecessor, uh, President, uh, former President Muhammadu Buhari, who also refused to negotiate with, uh, with bandits. Now, do you believe it's prudent for the government to leverage his intelligence and expertise in tracking down these kidnappers, especially considering the risks of not negotiating with them? He has met with them a number of times. He has an idea where they are. Is it possible that this can be what we need to be able to find, track them and find them and bring these children back home? Yeah, no, Sheikh Ahmed Gumi's, uh, and we, we went into the forest, I and the rest of his team went into the forest with him. Nine states, and we engaged the leadership of all these bad guys. And he's not offering, he's not saying that I know where they are and I want to get them out, no. We have been saying it over and over and over again. He's looking at the global, not this little getting this out. We've gotten how many out? We've gotten a Faka out, we've gotten trained people out, we've gotten this out, we, then what? Where did we go beyond that? We have to look at global. And that is what he was saying. We have to, all of us, we have to get involved and see how we can bring peace to our land. Nobody can bring peace to us. And at this moment I have to, I, uh, I have to appeal to our northern leadership. 
We have had a northern president from Katsina for eight years. Before he came, we did not have a single IDP. All our local governments were safe. Now, Katsina stayed 22 out of 34 local governments. That is 65% of Katsina. The DSS is usually a huge failure in Nigeria in terms of intelligence. We all know that each time we have these security-related issues, the DSS will seem to not be existing in Nigeria. We leave everything at the hands of the military. And still, it is perceived that some people are interested in this criminal game because of the money they make from it. Well, the North should look inward and help Nigeria out from this mess. It's under siege. Borno State is more secure and safer than Katsina. That we had a president who is from there. That is a failing of us northerners. We need to look at ourselves. And now here we are. We have a leadership. We have a vice president number two who is from the north. We have a speaker of the house who is number, f number three, number four, who is from the north. We have an SGF who is from the north. We have the, 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 the senior most military officer who is from the north. We have uh, all the ministers of defense from the north. We have the minister of police from the north. We have the national security advisor from the north. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will look at us and say, you guys have no excuse not to bring peace to your land. So it is up to us to look at ourselves in the mirror. We Northerners, especially those in government, and lock the door and say, people, how do we take care of these problems? President Bola Ahmed Tinubu from the Southwest cannot come and bring peace to us. It is us that must bring peace to ourselves. And it is not the military that will bring peace. I've said it again and again. Banditry can never be won on the battlefield. We are just putting the military to clean up after this mess. Go everywhere. So northern leadership, all of us, must come in, lock the door, and sit down and see how we can bring peace to our land. Fifteen years of Boko Haram. Nine years of banditry. Are we going to continue this forever? It's going to be a forever war. We are all here in Abuja. Our children in the villages have been taken away. Our women in the villages have been raped. Our farmers cannot go into the, in, 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 to their farms. Did you guys see the primary school of Korea? My friends in the United States come, come, calling me and say, did you see the primary school where these kids were taken? No roof, nothing, nothing there. Well, this is the leadership of the North that fuels all of this. Mm. And we're looking elsewhere. We are blaming somebody else. No. Leaders of the North, those in government and out of government, it's time for us to look ourselves in the face and say, we have failed our people, we need to do better. The military cannot bring peace to ourselves. No. We must all get involved and stop this nonsense, this boko haram, this, this banditry that has pauperized our people, that has pillaged our, our land. Our people cannot go to farm and we're expecting the military to throw drones and bring peace to us. No. It is us that will bring peace to ourselves. And that is what Sheikh Gumi is saying. We have to all get involved, look at the global peace, and see how we can bring peace to ourselves. Peace will never come from Abuja. All the military has to come from us. We, the people that live there. And those in government, you're in government for a purpose. You're not in government to be going around in Abuja in big black SUVs and overstarched with burying us. Bring peace to your land. The question I want to ask as a person is where was this prof when the UAE gave Nigeria the list of those sponsoring Boko Haram and other terrorists who are from Nigeria? Where was this prof when Malami, who was the then SGF, refused to prosecute those sponsoring terrorism in Nigeria? Where was this man when Buhari kept quiet over that list that was given to Nigeria? Why they cry now when things are getting out of hand? You've been speaking about northern leadership um, particularly, so I would like to talk about something that happened this week with the Northern Senators Forum when the chairman, Abdul Ningi, was suspended. He is a senator for Bauchi Central from the PDP and has now been replaced with Senator Yaradua from Katsina, um, the state that you were just talking about, is facing a high level of insecurity. Do you believe that the Senate was right to suspend um, Senator Ningi, especially as he raised the issue of discrepancies in constituency projects. Now, it's been reported that the Senate President, um, Gutwil Akbabio, and Akwai Bom Northwest Senatorial District has received over 21 billion naira from just two ministries, the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security 
and the Ministry of Women Affairs. Just two ministries giving Aquaibom Northwest a senatorial zone over 20 billion naira in co budgeted for constituency projects. Whereas some senators have come out to say, and Senator Abdul Ningi is saying, that some constituencies are receiving much less. And he was speaking about the North in particular. Do you think that there is inequity in the Senate? And do you think that his suspension was the right course of action for the Senate to take? I think uh, uh, Senator Abdul Nindi blew the whistle uh, rather too loud for some people's ears. The honest truth is I am not a senator, but I was ashamed that these are our representatives that have a prefix distinguished, where they clearly distinguish themselves. That was a circus. That was disgraceful and shameful. These are our senators. Standing up and telling the world this is what we got. Each senator, do you like it or not? I did the math. Oh, we got 200. Oh, some people got 500. Oh, some people got 300. When many, millions of Nigerians go to bed hungry, our elected representatives are mourning on the floor of the Senate that this is what they got, this is what they got. Fellow Nigerians, there are over, there are 109 senators. Do the math. If each one of them gets about 250 million, it will be a total of up to 27 billion. Oh, constituency project. After they, they, they were given by Mr. President 164 million to buy bulletproof cars. So it is all about them. The question remains, how did we even get to this point where Akwabio became the president of the Senate? A man who was under investigation, a man who was to be probed by the EFCC, a man alleged of so many corruptions. So guys, that is the kind of country we are living in where the kind of leaders we make or we produce as a country are leaders with questionable characters. Not the people that send them there. These cannot continue. We the people are watching them. We are not proud of you. We are ashamed of you. And, 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 and the Senate President, Senator Akpaibio, is, 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 is the most disgraceful I've ever seen. 21 billion to your constituency. A, a, a street light, a, a solar light was selling out on the budget for over 190 million. Do over 180 million each. This is not corruption, what is? If this is not corruption, what is? At a time when our people are dying of hunger, at a time when our children have been admitted with coronavirus and Kwashoko, at the time when millions of patients are abandoning taking their medications because they cannot afford it. Our representatives are feeding fat on our, on our commonwealth. And then all of a sudden they are saying, oh, northern senators, southern senators, yeah, but when he came to share, there was no north or south. Come on, people. We are fed up with you, our elected representatives. We are terribly disappointed. This cannot continue. We didn't send you to go and be divine of a uh, national commonwealth. When your people out there uh, are dying. Well, I sent it to many senators. Well, what they did? Tell me what they did. Oh, some of them sent me oh, trailer loads of, of grains they are taking home. So... 64 years after independence, our people are turned into beggars. Like you see in Afghanistan, or northern Gaza, or Sudan, distributing grains. Distributing grains in this land of plenty. In this land of plenty. We have insecurity, we have poverty, we have hunger, children are out of school. And you're here in Abuja distributing money and we think, we are surprised there is insecurity in this country. No country, no nation, no matter how, 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 how powerful, will have peace with this much inequity. I've said it again and again. So, our senators, we are terribly ashamed of all of you. And you should return that money. And my advice to Senator, the Senate President, is to resign honorably and return that money. 21 billion to your constituency alone is what but inequity please right. please mm. and nigerians must raise their voices this is not acceptable it's not acceptable so there's corruption in the executive there's corruption in the in, in the national assembly there's corruption everywhere and you expect peace 
We won't just be deluding ourselves. So, we all know that most of these governors, after their eight term, you know, in their various states as governor, they ended up at the National Assembly. You know, they, that is where they go to rest and relax themselves with more corruption. So, you can see that Akpa Bio has been uh, a governor for eight years. He has been a minister. He has been there. He has been here. And today, he is a senator. I mean, he is a senator. And look at the corruption. Nigerians go to bed hungry. I think it is time for us to hit the streets and begin to ask for his impeachment and also his resignation from that position. So guys, let me know what you think about all this because we know there is a correlation between corruption and all this uh, insecurity that we are seeing. Assuming them using this money for the good of the people. Nigeria wouldn't have been where it is today. Anyway, all blames to INEC and all blames to the president of Nigeria who sits and watch these things happen and he says nothing about it. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.